I need to tell you one last thing from this passage about the possession of the shield of faith. God is not going to drop it out of heaven into your life. It doesn't say God will give you the shield of faith. It says, above all, take the shield of faith. You don't get the shield for good behavior after you've been a Christian for five years. No, what does it say in the verse, taking up the shield of faith? What does that mean? Who does the taking up? The soldier. How do you get the shield of faith? You appropriate it. You take it. You possess it. What does that mean? That means you have to get the truth. Faith has to be appropriated. Then it can be used. Faith is not faith unless it's at work. True faith is always active, and the way you appropriate the faith is to arm yourself with the truth about God and who he is, and to arm yourself with the word of God so that no matter what Satan sends your way, you have an appropriate answer, an appropriate truth, an appropriate verse which you can use to repel him. Let me jump ahead just a little bit to the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. That's the only offensive weapon we have in the whole arsenal that we're given in Ephesians chapter 6, just the, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. I used to think the sword of the Spirit was the Bible, but that's not it. The sword of the Spirit is the rhema of God. That's the word in the language of the New Testament. And the rhema of God is not the logos, which is the word for the whole Bible. The rhema of God is the short sword that comes from the arsenal to use against the enemy, and the rhema of God is a specific truth for a specific issue. So the Bible says, take the rhema of God, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and use that against your enemy. This is not really the sword, this is the armory. And in this armory are many swords, and the Bible tells us that we're to look at what Satan is trying to do to us, how he's trying to attack us, where we know we seem to be vulnerable, and we're to take the shield of faith and hold it up in that particular place of our vulnerability, and we're to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the rhema of God, and that means find the scriptures that deal with the issue that Satan is trying to destroy you with. You know, the Word of God is a gift, as we've learned today. It's the exceeding great and precious promises of God. But it's taking out of that Word the specific truths that deal with the specific problems that we face. And every one of us know what our problems are, don't we? We know where Satan gets us. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Sure you do. Right now, in your mind, you're cycling through, oh yeah, man, I need some verses for this. <laughs> So let's say my problem, Pastor Jeremiah, is I'm afraid. I, I can't sleep sometimes. I think about things and wonder if they're going to happen. I, I deal with fear. Here's what I would do. I would go to the concordance. I would look up the words fear and afraid, get a yellow pad, write all the references down, and then go through the Bible and look at all those verses, and you're going to find the ones you need that will just grab hold of your heart when you read them. In fact, the whole issue of fear will be one of the simplest things you ever did. The Bible is filled with truths that we're not to be afraid. In fact, someone has said there are 365 fear knots in the Bible, one for every day of the year. Over and over again, you will find in the Scripture these truths. If God tells me I don't have to be afraid, if God tells me that he will be with me in every situation, I will hold that shield up against the enemy when he comes at me with all of his fiery arrows. Do we know what we believe? If we know what we believe and we're building, we're building this shield so that it will be impervious to anything Satan can do to us. The problem that we have in the contemporary church today is that our faith tends to be somewhat shallow. And when you have shallow faith, you become an easy target for the enemy. He can get through the shallowness of our faith without much effort. And so if we're not careful, uh, we are victimized. We need to take what God has given us in his precious promises and mine out of it the truths that will help us live the practical Christian life with victory.